Um, we're going to do the neck and the rest of the spine. So really the focus is the spine today. So you're going to need a roller, um, a big pillow to support your neck. Um, we'll start in a chair and then two balls in a sock and you should be able to sort of squeeze between the two balls so that they separate slightly because we'll be coming down the spine. And um, although they wouldn't hurt the spine, it's much nicer if they just died the side of the spine. So, and I've got two socks, one with a soft ball and one with a hard ball. So I've got a bit of a choice later on. So we're just gonna start with a vagal release. We'll start with the salamander. So um, C1 and C2, the vertebrae at the top of the spine, they're responsible for 45% of our ability to rotate our head. So a really important vertebra. And when the muscles around the back of the neck get too tight, it pushes the vertebra forward and brings them into rotation. So that's not good for the, um, the spinal cord. And it's not good for the muscles in the neck. So the salamander is a really good exercise just to bring C1 and C2 back into their correct position. So you're going to just um, drop your shoulders. You're going to let your right ear drop towards your right shoulder. And then take your right hand up and over and just place it on the left side of your head. You're not even pulling. You're just using the weight of the hand. And then with your eyes, look down to the right shoulder. So we've got lots of things going on here. We're doing the salamander. We've got a scalene stretch in there, trapezius. We're working on stretching the vagal nerve in the eyes. So as always, you're just waiting for the deep breath, the sigh, the swallow, the yawn. I got mine nice and quickly. And we'll just we'll just stay here for the full 30 seconds. If you've got your sigh or your swallow or your release, you can go from looking down to looking up to what would be um, two o'clock or 10 o'clock. So depending on which side you're moving to. And really look with both eyes so that you feel an uncomfortable stretch in the eyes. So uncomfortable meaning just it's a little bit annoying because it's an effort. And again, you're just waiting for the sigh, the swallow, the yawn. So once you've had that, it's about 30 seconds, just gently remove the hand and put it under the head and just gently bring the head back into centre. Move your nose. I like to do circles with my nose and that just relaxes the scalenes which have been stretched. So again, drop your shoulders, left ear to left shoulder. Try not to rotate your head, so just left ear to left shoulder. And then you're taking your left hand up and over, placing it on the right side of your head. Just allow the heaviness of the hand just to start to stretch out the muscles in the side of the neck. You're looking down to your left shoulder. Do you feel the stretch in the eyes? I'm waiting for that reaction in the nervous system, the sigh, the swallow, the yawn. So I got mine really quickly on this side. As soon as you get that release, you could look up till, for me, it's two o'clock, for you it might be 10 o'clock. And again, just feel that strong stretch in the eyes. So this is really stretching the muscles, the suboccipital muscles, and these muscles connect to C1 and C2. That's about 30 seconds. Just take the hand away from the head, place it underneath the head, and just gently bring the head back into center. Just do your nose circles. Do a few shrugs and just see how everything feels. So we're coming into the suboccipital. I'm gonna bring my camera a little bit closer because I'm a, in this figure in the <laughs> that's a little bit just a little bit more of me in the shop so um if you think if you find the rim of the skull at the back of the skull and then just come into where the spine is where the spine c1 and c2 go up into the skull i want you with two fingers just to gently move outwards about about one to two centimeters then I want you to move 
down and diagonally inwards again, about one to two centimeters. And then I want you to come up either side of the spine. So we're going out two centimeters, diagonally down two centimeters and up two centimeters. So this forms the suboccipital triangle. So there's a group of muscles here that run horizontally, diagonally and vertically that really support C1 and C2. So we're going to focus on the horizontal ones and with two fingers, we're just going to do a little oppositional rub on the muscles right on the, so if this is the rim of the skull, you're right on the rim of the skull. You can feel there's very deep muscle here. So this is an easy way to relax these muscles. If you want to get a little bit more technical, we could drop our left hand and just do the right side, slow it down and just move inwards and outwards and just see if it feels different. One direction should glide, the other direction might be a little bit sort of stuck, a bit stiffer. So just figure out if you can discern the difference between those two directions. The side that glides is good, but the side that you feel gets stuck, the point of resistance where you get stuck, just pull out, find that point of resistance, and then just gentle pressure. And you could use one finger with the other finger on top of it. So it's a trigger point. And again, you just sort of breathe. And again, you'll get the sigh, the swallow, the yawn. So I got a swallow on that one and, and a little bit more saliva in my mouth. So once you've had that release, go back to just doing your little frictional rub. Best way to do this is lying down in bed at night. You know, before you go to sleep, you'll sleep better because your arms are not up in the air, it's a bit easier. So drop that hand down, take the left hand to the other side. So from the spine, where the spine comes into the skull, just moving inwards and outwards about two centimeters. And again, just try and discern which direction is nice and slippery and glides and which direction just feels like you meet resistance in the muscle. So where that resistance is, is where there's a trigger point in the muscle and the muscle is bunched up and the, you know, the lymphatic drainage and the circulation in that area is not as good. So you can feel the tonal difference as you learn to practice this. So a little bit of practice, you'll get really good at this. So you move into that point of resistance where you feel like your fingers get stuck. You put one finger on top of the other just to apply a little bit more pressure to the trigger. And I can feel both of these are actually quite tender as well. They're quite sore. So when there's um, a blocked trigger point where the nerve root comes into the muscle, you get um, reduced blood flow, reduced lymph flow, you get um, the pain receptors in that area switch on, and um, you start to get quite toxic in the muscle around that area on a, on a microscopic scale, but you can certainly feel it when you press it. So you'll feel the, the little hardness start to relax. That's the sign that the trigger point is released. You just do that little rub, you might get the side, the swallow, the yawn. So maybe you shake out your hands, maybe go back to doing the double rub again. So that relaxes those horizontal um, capitis muscles. So now we'll do the vertical ones. You're just gonna go either side of the spine. You're gonna do opposite direction. Just gonna do a little oppositional rub, about two centimeters. So if you look up at the ceiling, you can feel how those muscles go up under the skull. If you look forward, those muscles relax. And you could do the same thing. It takes a lot of time to do for all of them. But if you do it yourself at home, you just do one side, you see which side glides and which side is a little bit of resistance. And then you'd apply pressure into that resistance in the muscle. So I'm not going to do that one because it's going to take too much time. And then if you go from two centimeters down and you go diagonally back to two centimeters out, you've got your oblique capitis muscles. And again, you could just do a frictional rub on those obliques. Now these oblique muscles are often the ones that give you the best release as you work on them. If you wanted to, you could just do one my arms are getting tired from being up. 
and then the other. So quite sore for me, I'm quite tender on this side. So again, you could find that point of tenderness. You could put one finger on top of the, under the bottom finger, and then just use that double pressure just to apply pressure to the trigger point. So even, even 10, 20 seconds here is gonna make a difference. I'm doing a little bit of this. It's really tender in this place. So as these muscles shorten and tighten, they're gonna pull C1 backwards and bring it into a sort of rotated position, which is then gonna cause compression on the, um, the vagal nerves and the, and the uh, spinal cord as well. So try the other side. So find the side that has the least, that has the most resistance. So the side that glides is fine, or the direction that glides is fine, but the side, the direction that sticks, just find that point of resistance in the muscle and just add a two finger pressure and a little bit of a wiggle. You can advance this also by adding in a torsional rotation. So as you do the pressure, you can rotate your head gently to the side so that you're also stretching the muscle as you press on its trigger point. So that is going to be um, a much quicker release. It's going to speed up the release. It's going to increase blood flow. So you can feel the difference of adding in the torsional rotation to the, to the other side, which was just a static release. So you could come back and you could do the torsional rotation on the other side, if that was the side that was more painful. So there's a whole list, there's a list of about 10 things that releasing your suboccipitals um, does, but it's, you know, it's really good for cognitive function, increased blood supply to the brain, um, more alertness, um, it's going to lower your blood pressure, it's going to lower your heart rate, it's going to make you calmer, more relaxed. In autistic people, they become more high functioning. There's a whole load of things that it will do. Um, just roll the shoulders, just move the head. It's linked with studies for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and things like that as well, dementia. So um, just move your head and just see how that feels now. It should feel quite nice. So you should feel that there's more blood flowing through that area. You feel a little bit freer in those top two vertebra. So we're coming to the scalings at the side of the neck. I want you to turn your head to the right. And as you do that, with your left hand, just find your sternocleidomastoid, that muscle that goes from the middle of your collarbone up to the back of the ear. As you turn your head, it's going to jump up. I want you to come halfway down the neck and find the outer edge of your sternocleidomastoid. So if this is the sternocleidomastoid running from the, the, um, the collarbone to the ear, you're going to find the outside, the outside edge halfway down the neck. And with two or three fingers, I want you to do a little gentle circle. Turn your head back to the camera again, look forward. And you're not pressing down into the, into the neck because there's blood vessels and nerves here. You're just doing a smooth, so if it was your, if it's my skin on my arm, you're just moving the skin and the superficial fascia without pressing down into the deep muscle that's underneath. So the same applies for the neck. And the rule for the neck, because the neck is the place where you get the most benefit from doing trigger points, but it's also the place that you have to be knowledgeable and be careful because you've got blood vessels and nerves running through this part of the neck. <clears throat> so just gentle circles and then gradually start to work your way down the outer border of your sternocleidomastoid. Now as you work down, remember no downward pressure, it's just superficial pressure, light pressure. As you move down, it might start to feel more and more painful and more and more um, nervy. And um, that because there is, there is nerves here, 
but also the edgy sort of, it's almost like an electric type feel that you can feel, which denotes a nerve being stimulated. It's, um, it's because you've got active triggers here. So as you come down to the top of the collarbone, you're trying to sort of just gently rub above the collarbone, keep it circular or elliptical, and don't press too hard. Now, I, I did this the other day, it was so painful, I could hardly bear to touch it. Today, because I've already done it a few days ago, it's not so bad. Follow the upper, upper line of your collarbone and work upwards towards the edge of your shoulder. If you lift your arm up, you'll feel the trapezius, that big muscle at the back, and you're trying to just go between the collarbone and the trapezius into that little groove. So you've got like a little indentation, the collarbone here, the trapezius up here, and you're gently rubbing sort of under the trapezius, not too much pressure. So once you've found the trapezius, you can drop your arm down. You should still be able to feel the collarbone. And so you're just getting into here as well. So the scaling is attached to the first two ribs that are just above the collarbone. And so they re refer a lot of pain down into the shoulder, down into the arm, even into the fingers when you get numbness in the fingers. It's usually because there's tightness here and compression on the nerves. So just release and just move your head for a minute. So if you close your eyes, you should be able to feel in the brain how different that already feels on that side. So as the scalings pull the ribs up, they pull up against the collarbone, the ribs pull up, and then it traps the nerves in the blood supply that comes through here. So it can cause um, called thoracic outlet syndrome. So um, it just causes a lot of referred pain down into the chest and the arm and the shoulder. So look to the left, sorry, look to the right. And with your right hand, just go across to the left side of your sternocleidomastoid, this muscle that runs from the collarbone to the back of the ear, halfway up the neck, find the outer border of your sternocleidomastoid and then look forward. And with two or three fingers in the middle of the neck against that outer border, just do some gentle circles. And I can feel straight away that I'm a lot more reactive on this side. So remember, no downward pressing, it's just superficial. You're just moving the skin and the superficial fascia around. And that very light pressure is enough to relax these muscles. And, you know, um, the experts say that even just 10 seconds of this circular rubbing is going to make a huge difference to how the scalings are and their tone. So you're coming down the outer border of your, of your sternocleidomastoid, that muscle that goes from the breastbone to the ear. And as you come down, it's going to get more and more sensitive because it's coming to where the muscles attach to the first rib and the second rib. So you want to feel the upper edge of your collarbone and you're just sort of going gently behind the collarbone with that elliptical movement. And then as soon as it starts to feel like it's relaxing, so you start off with it being quite nervy and quite alive, almost electrified, then you can move outwards along the upper edge of your collarbone and you're moving towards the shoulder. If you lift your arm up, you'll find your trapezius at the back and you're just going between, so you've got that little V-shaped notch between the collarbone and the trapezius. And if you sort of gently push down, you can feel this hardness there, don't press too hard, but that is a rib. So you're just rubbing on the top of the rib where the muscle attaches to the rib. So these muscles, although we call them neck muscles, they're actually breathing muscles. If you were to cough, <coughs> you'll feel these muscles contracting as you cough. So they're really, you know, sort of dual purpose breathing. And that feels really nice now. So just take the hand away, move the head to see how that feels, do some shoulder rolls. 
We could look to the left again, come to just above the collarbone, and we could just gently squeeze. So when you do the sternocleidomastoid, the thumb is pushing outwards, and the two fingers are on the other side of the muscle. And it's a little bit like you're milking, milking another. <laughs> and it's it's more of a squeeze. There's no there's no downward pressure into what is your um, carotid artery and your jugular vein, which run through this group here. So you're just pushing outward. You're squeezing between the thumb and the first and the second finger. And near the collarbone is very tender usually. And you could do four squeezes and then just gradually move up. If you're not sure where the sternocleidomastoid is, look to the left, you'll find your muscle and then look forward again. You want to be looking forward so the muscle is relaxed. You don't want to be squeezing the muscle that's tense. It's already going to be sore. So I'm coming all the way up to the back of the ear. And I'm just figuring out where my active triggers are. So for me, a little bit behind the ear and you can squeeze or you can do a two-fingered rub. There's definitely a little bit of tenderness at the mastoid process, but most of all for me it was down at the collarbone. So I'm coming back to where it was. You might there's there's triggers coming up sort of at quarterly um, spaces all the way up here. So just find where you're tender. We're not all the same. Now, if you turn your head to the left, just above the collarbone, if you come out a little bit, sometimes there's a second branch that comes down here. So this is your sternal branch at the front, but at the side, you've got a clavicular branch as well. So again, no downward pressure, just do a little frictional rub. So it's like one comes to the collarbone and then there's another one where my finger is which I'll do in front of my top. There's another one that comes to the collarbone. So it's just a little bit out. And if you turn your head, you might just feel there's a taut band there. Just give that a little bit of a rub. And if you come under the collarbone, you can feel where it attaches to the collarbone. Gentle pressure. And just relax. So the left side, look to the right, feel the sternocleidomastoid jump up. Get your thumb on the inner border, your two fingers, first and second finger on the outer border, just above the collarbone, and just do some little gentle squeezes. And the thumb is pushing to the left, and the two fingers are just almost like a milking action. So for me, very tender around the collarbone. And then you're coming upwards. If you lose the muscle, look to the right, and it will jump up, and then look forward again, and just come up. And it's a diagonal line from the center of your collarbone to the back of the ear. So I can feel this side is a lot more unhappy than the other side was. Things like reading, um, working on computers, painting, watching television, where the head is slightly to one side for extended periods, you're going to activate these triggers um, from staying in one position for too long. So, you know, for me, one, two, three, four, they're all a little bit active. So we've got the one at the collarbone, just above the collarbone. You come up a quarter of the way. There's another one here. You can come up another quarter. There's another one here. Another quarter, just below the back of the ear. You can do it here. It's hard to grip because the muscle gets very big at the muscle process. You could do a little bit of a frictional rub. You never do both sides at the same time because of the blood vessels. If you turn your head to the right and move outwards, you might just find that clavicular branch. So one branch comes to the collarbone or the sternum, and then this second branch comes to the collarbone. So you'll feel a taut band in a sort of a, a vertical position and you're just rubbing just above the collarbone. You don't need to go any higher than that. And just do a little bit of a frictional rub. So this is where you're starting to get a little bit more specialized now. You're starting to know your muscles and you're starting to really understand what it is you're feeling underneath your hands, under your fingers. So just move your head, your shrugs, 
to the trapezius, put your thumb, come to the right side, put your thumb at the front. If you lift your arm up, you can feel the trapezius sort of just below where the neck is and the slope of the shoulder begins. If you press your thumb in there, you'll find it's quite tender, two fingers behind, and you're just going to do that, that thumb and two finger grip. Squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze. So this is the universal number one trigger point. There's two trigger points. You've got one at the front and one at the back. And you squeeze. So we'll use um, a sponging action. We'll squeeze and then we'll release. Squeeze. Releasing, squeeze. You could just squeeze and hold, but I usually find this one is so painful that it's actually quite unpleasant if you hold it all the time. So the squeeze and release just helps to get the blood moving, the lymph, and then um, it releases endorphins. And then you find that you can go on to be a little bit more, more direct. Now there's a Feldman cry technique where you hold with the thumb and the two fingers and you just lift upwards, you lift your trapezius up, let your arm just hang, hang on the thigh, relax. And you're just lifting it up. And you do it for about 20 to 30 seconds. And there's a point where it gets a little bit annoying. And that is the point when your brain is starting to ask, why is there this continuous pressure here? And your brain will then divert to this point and it will really start to address any um, tightness that's here. So you're holding the muscle, you're lifting the muscle up, you're pressing on the triggers, you're sending a message through the nervous system. Look at this place because it's very tight. So about 20 seconds, and then you let go. And if you feel the neck, it will feel trapezius, you'll feel it's a little bit softer. So you might need to do that a couple of times, but it's a good quick fix if you're going through the day and you're quite tense. So lift your arm up, find your trapezius, put your thumb at the front and just see where that point of tenderness is. It's just below the, the neck coming into the shoulder. And then first finger, second finger behind, you've got your three fingers grip, squeeze and release. But work within your pain threshold. You want to be about a six to a seven. Squeeze and release and squeeze. Release, squeeze. So it's a combination of pressure point work, trigger point work and sponging. Squeezing the fluid out of the tissue so that it refills. Squeeze. Refills, squeeze. So now do the Feldman cry um, technique where you squeeze with your thumb and two fingers and you lift the muscle up and away from the collarbone and the back of the shoulder blade or the top of the shoulder blade and just hold it and just wait. So give yourself a good 20 seconds. Let it become a little bit irritating. So at that point of irritation, your brain on a much deeper level is asking, what is this pressure? And taking a little bit more notice of this area. So just a little bit longer. You will even feel the muscle softening in your hand. You could add in your torsional stretches, adding that little rotation with the head. These things will advance it and make it a little bit quicker. And then release. So again, if you just feel the tone of the muscle, it should have softened. So this side is relaxed even more after I've done it. And you know, if you've got more time, you'd go back and you might do it a second time. So we'll come off the chair or and we're going to grab our roller now. We're staying with trapezius. Move all my rubbish. Staying with trapezius, and we're going to do the seesaw because this is a really nice release for the trapezius. So you're going to place the roller 
below the level of the shoulders, just on the upper part of your upper back. You, if you want to be, if you just feel down your neck, you've got your seven cervical vertebra, and then you've got that big vertebra, which is thoracic one, T1. You want to stay below that level. So T1 is level with the top of the shoulder. So you're never going onto the neck because that is not safe. So you're going to just lie on the roller and you're going to bring the roller to the back of your shoulders. So this is where you've got deep, deep muscle trapezius here. And just the pressure of the roller is going to feel really lovely. Keep your chin slightly tucked. So you're in a retracted neck. You're not relaxing the neck. The chin is slightly tucked, so the neck is stable. And you're just going to lift your bottom and drop your head. Drop your bottom and lift your head. So it's a bit like a seesaw. As the head goes down, the pelvis lifts. As the pelvis goes down, the head lifts. And you're in the deep muscle at the back of the shoulders, at the top of the shoulder blades. So this is a combination of trapezius and supraspinatus muscles of the shoulder blade. So just keep the chin slightly pulled in, slightly retracted. So the beauty of this is also that you're working your abs and your glutes and your legs while you do the release into the trapezius. Or more. You could stay with your head down, you could even put your head on the pillow or the floor, and you could just gently lift your pelvis up and down in a small range. So you're keeping the pressure on the muscles. And then slowly float the head, lower the bottom, and bring the roller to the middle of your shoulder blades. So in this position, you're going to support your head. You're just gently going to glide from right side to left side across the deep muscles of your upper back. The whole load of muscles now is going to be um, rhomboids, it's going to be trapezius. We're just going from right side to left side, right side. So anywhere around the shoulder blades is always very active. Lots of triggers. You could turn your side to side movement into a sort of figure of eight with your elbow. So you make a circle with your right elbow, you make a circle with your left elbow. Just keep going across that middle back region. So coming into center now, keep your chin slightly touched. If you've got neck issues, you could bring your elbows forward so that you limit the movement in your neck. Just make sure you're not pulling on the neck and just breathe in and look at the ceiling. Gently stretch over the roller. Breathe out, pull the belly button to the back of your ribs, float the head and look through the knees. So you're breathing in, look at the ceiling. You're breathing out, contract your abs, belly button to spine. So this is moving the vertebra in the middle of your spine, in the middle of your rib cage, mid thoracic. You're using your in breath, so you're expanding your ribs, but you're using your diaphragm to stabilize. You're breathing out, you're using your abdominals. Breathing in, the diaphragm stabilizes the spine. Breathing out, abdominals stabilize the spine. If your neck is okay with it, you could breathe in, look at the ceiling. You could open your elbows and bring a little bit more of your chest muscles into it. And you could breathe out, you could close your elbows and deeply imprint your abs. Breathing in. So this is going to be working all of your abdominal muscles as well as opening up your thoracic spine. Breathing out, deeply pull the abs in. Feel like you're pulling your belly button under the rib cage towards the back of your rib cage, the low ribs at the back of your rib cage. One more, breathing in. Nice, full, deep breath, breathing out. So you've got your roller at the middle of your shoulder blade. Bring your feet in a little bit closer and we'll do some rinsing. We'll lift our bottom up 
and we'll roll to the back of the shoulders, so stay below that big vertebra T1, and we're rolling about two thirds of the way down the rib cage. So don't go to the place where it feels uncomfortable. So you're rolling up to that big vertebra at the bottom of your neck. You're never on your neck for this. And then you're rolling down two thirds. And if you really focus on how it feels, you can feel that as you roll the roller down, there's a certain point where it doesn't feel comfortable anymore. And that's because you can sense that you're not as strong in that lower part of your ribcage. You just keep rolling along these muscles so you're moving the fluid out of the tissues so that they refill with the nutrient dense fluid behind. Make sure you're not holding your breath. It's a really lovely thing to do. So come back to the shoulder blades, put the bottom on the floor, and go back to breathing in, look at the ceiling. It should feel a lot easier now. Breathing out, contract your abs, look through the knees. Breathing in, opening. Breathing out, closing. Breathing in, open, breathe out, close. So take the hands forward one at a time, lift your feet, hold behind the knees, and just swing up into sitting and extend your legs. And then you're just going to sit gently forward, rounding forward, and just allow your back to come into the opposite position to bring it back into fully relaxed. Pull the belly up under the rib cage. Just add a very small, very gentle movement. Just find what feels good. And then slowly come back to center. So um, if you need a pillow for your neck, this is the point that you grab a pillow. Grab your two balls in a sock. So I've got hard balls and I've got soft balls, so I've got a bit of a choice. And you're going to Bring the start with the soft balls. You're going to bring them again to the back of your skull, just under the rim of the skull where the suboccipitals are again. So, two balls in a sock is just the perfect tool. I don't need a pillow for my neck. Perfect tool for working these muscles. And you're just going to bring your feet in. You don't want your legs in a straight position, bent knees. And you could just do a little bit of gentle nodding up and down. You could hold the balls in place if you feel they're rolling down too quickly. So nodding up and down or side to side. So along the rim of the skull, there are many triggers, not just the suboccipitals. There's a whole load of other triggers as well from some of the smaller muscles in the neck. And for me, these trigger points are exquisitely painful. So I'm glad that I've got a soft ball. You could also do this with the roller, but the balls are going to get into these tiny spaces much better. So one of the most productive places to do for the suboccipitals is right in the center of the triangle. So if you find that little indentation, if you come from behind your ear, you feel strong muscle, you feel a little indentation, and then you feel deep muscle at the spine again. In that indentation, you could go into that place with a ball, with a soft ball, or with your fingers. You wouldn't use a gouache at all. You wouldn't use a nobbler. It's too delicate in here because you have got blood vessels here. Um, but a soft ball is fine. And just gently nodding the head. So keep it in the upper part, in that two centimeters below the rim of the skull. And just gently work through here. So you've got seven cervical vertebra. One is under the skull. C2 is where we are now. And then you can come down one vertebra at a time to C3, C4. And you're in the strong capitis muscles at the back of the neck. So nodding your nose up and down, or you could do nose right to left. 
So as you do that, you're on one side of the neck and then you're on the other side of the neck. And you just keep bringing these balls down. And as you come to lower, as you come to C5, C6, you could either place your hands under your head or you could put the pillow there so that your head is not hanging off the balls and you're not using too much pressure on the neck. Just make sure your neck muscles are comfortable with the amount of pressure that you're using. So there's always different ways to do things. Just putting your hands on the back of your skull means you can control how much pressure is on those two balls. And then you could bring the ball down again. So I'm just above that really big vertebra. I'm on C6, C7 now. So just nodding the head up and down, side to side. <coughs> So maybe now we're going to um, just come to that big vertebra, T1, and it's at this point that you need to bring your pillow in and put the pillow at the back of your skull so that your head is not hanging backwards towards the floor. You don't want to overextend the neck. The neck wants to be in neutral, nice and relaxed. So in this position, you could start to bring in arm floats. So pretty tender around here, and this is because we're coming into trigger points for the vater scapulae. Once you've got to T1, you can easily move um, down the spine by just lifting your bottom and pushing yourself up two centimeters and the balls will just roll down. So we're doing paraspinal, we're coming down one vertebra at a time through the spine. We're in the thoracic spine, so we're at T2 now. Arm floats. So at T2, if your ball sock is not too tight, you could pull those balls out a little bit and you could get into the vater scapulae. So you're on that inner edge of your shoulder blades and you can feel it's pretty tender in here. So I'm doing double arm floats. <clears throat> you can do arm hand circles on the ceiling. That's going to really get into those muscles. Elbow circles. Elbow floats. Elbow floats is going to be a little bit stronger, a little bit more weight. <clears throat> you can do something that they call jazz arms, where you're reaching with one arm, reaching with the other. So it's a little bit like dancing, <laughs> horizontal dancing. And just find which version you like the best. So then when you're ready, you're going to lift your bottom up and you're going to push upwards two more centimeters. <clears throat> so now we're in the trigger points for the rhomboids. We're right at the top of the shoulder blades on the inside edge of the shoulder blade, between the spine and the shoulder blade. And we've got some very active triggers here for the rhomboids and for trapezius as well. So it could be either or or both. Stay with your arm floats, just make sure your neck is supported, your head is in neutral, you're not hanging off the back edge of the, the ball. Do circles with the hands, elbow circles, elbow floats, jazz arms. So the jazz arms means that you're pushing into one ball quite firmly while you give the other side a little bit of a breather and then you go to the other arm so you're alternating. So again, lifting your bottom and coming upwards two centimeters. So anywhere between the shoulder blades, you're gonna be on trapezius and rhomboid triggers. 
Teşekkürler. Yok sorarım. So you don't need to be, you know, too knowledgeable. Just to come down the spine, either side of the spine, in those strong spinalis muscles, the strong muscles that run either side of the vertebra, and you can really make a huge difference to how your back's feeling. You can work from the head down, or you can work from the tailbone up. I like both actually. I don't know if I've got a favorite, but I like them both. I suppose the answer to it would be if depending on whether it's your pelvic girdle or your shoulder girdle that's really giving you problems. So if it's your shoulder girdle, you start at the head. If it's your pelvic girdle, you start at the tailbone, and then you work upwards. Deal with the place that's got the most pain and discomfort first. So again, you lift your bottom, you're pushing up two centimeters. I'm still within the shoulder blades. And it all hurts, but it's a sort of good hurt. I can tell that it's releasing a lot of tightness in my back. Just focus on your breathing. Make sure you're not holding your breath if it's painful. And focus also on what you're thinking. So you want to be sending positive thoughts to the muscles, not thinking negative thoughts. So that helps the muscles to relax. There's a certain point when you do this rolling up with the ball that you start to leave your mat. So you might want to just wiggle down a bit and bring the ball down, bring the balls down. I'm going to change to the harder balls. Now I've gotten away from the really, really painful triggers. And I'm going to bring, I'm just at the bottom of my shoulder blades now. So at the bottom of the shoulder blade, you're still in your spinalis muscles, but you've also got um, serratus breathing muscles in here as well. So this it's a question now whether you want to just start to gently bring in a pelvic top. So remembering that the lower ribs, so from the shoulder blades down, they're not as strong as the upper ribs. You don't want to apply too much force. You could put your hands underneath your tailbone. So that way you can modify how much pressure you're using. You could put another pillow under the bottom as well. You could take the pillow away from the head and you could put it at the bottom. So, so once you get below the shoulder blade, you might not need the pillow at the head. So you can either push yourself up two centimeters or you could just move the ball with your hand and you're just going to come down. So I'm still in the rib cage, but I'm near what is T11, T12, I'm getting near the bottom of the ribs. And this is where the ribs are weakest. So really be gentle, really gentle here. Feels lovely though, because if you've got a tight lumbar spine, just above it, T1, a T11, T12 is going to be pretty tight as well. And so you're already coming into the tension for the middle back. So at this point, I would lift the bottom and I would come down to the lowest rib, which is T12. And I would, um, you could put the pillow there, or you could just gently keep your bottom lifted and just do a very gentle tuck. So if you're not committing, I've got my legs are very active. You're not allowing all of your body weight onto that lowest rib. So this is the weak rib, a little floating rib at the bottom. You can't put pressure on it. It's not strong enough, but just, just enough to massage the muscles, but not enough to hurt the bone. And then you're coming down into the space now, underneath the 12th rib. You're just in the space between the rib cage and the pelvis. So this is your quadratus lumbora. And it's, you can put the bottom on the floor. This is where it feels really lovely if you've got a, a tight back. 
So pelvic tucks, nice and gentle. You could do a knee lift, just a little bit more weight into those balls. You could do a knee that falls out. You could do a knee circle. So just sort of do it gentle first. Start with maybe three knee lifts, knee fall out, knee circle. Just do three. Just allow the muscles to start to relax. Pelvic tucks. So if you're near the rib cage, you've got active triggers there. If you're near the pelvis, you can come down a little bit, there's active triggers there as well. So just find where it feels the best. You can, once the muscles relax, you can sort of hug one knee. It's quite strong. So now bring the balls in the sock to the back of your pelvis at the top of your SI joint. So you feel there's like a little, it goes down a little bit into the pelvis here. And this point, the PSIS, is a really active point in the body. So just allow the ball to sit at the top of the SI joints. It's where the, the pelvis curves down into the sacrum. And it just feels really lovely to get the ball here. If it's too much, you could put your hands under your bottom, modify the load. You could do your knee lift. <clears throat> do your knee circles. Other side. So now we're going to move the ball downwards about one or two centimeters either side of your sacrum, that triangular group of bones at the bottom of your spine. So you're on your SI joints and it's going to release your glutes, going to release your SI joints. As you come down, it's going to get into your good fullness as well. So again, you come down another centimetre. So you're pulling the balls out a little bit here because it's quite wide where the SI joints are, wider than the spine is. So this marching action is good ab work as well. Make sure you're using your abs, you're not totally relaxed here. <clears throat> so when you're in the middle of the sacrum, their trigger points here for glute maximus and for piriformis. We're nearly there. So we're coming down again into where the rotators are now. So you can feel might be a little bit more tender down here. So we've got muscles that come from the sacrum that attach to our legs. Little tiny muscles that can get very tight. And then coming down again, so we're just either side of our tailbone and between the tailbone and the sit bones. This is a point of trigger points for glute maximus. And again, for those rotators that come down to the bottom of the pelvis. So just lift your bottom, take the ball away, grab your, um, or swing up into sitting, grab your roller, and just to finish, we're going to come back to quadratus lamborum. So you want your ankles and your knees and together, your hips are stacked, and you're just under that 12th rib, and you're just pushing the roller up underneath what is your erector spinae, your big group of, of spinal muscles. Put your hand across your chest, and it's more of a backwards movement. You're rolling backwards and you're looking at the ceiling, and that's when you can feel the pressure underneath the erector spinae into quadratus lamborum. 
So anywhere around here is going to feel good. The only thing you don't do is come forward onto that floating rib. And you only need to be told once because it feels quite uncomfortable if you do even try to do that. So it's all that backwards range. It's just getting in. And you could stay here and you could do a little gentle scrub. So you've got spinal processes that come out at the side of your spine and these muscles are all attaching to them. You're just giving them a little gentle rub. And then carefully come off. Doesn't take very long to make a big difference. And then try the other side. So under the 12th rib, ankles and knees are together, hand across the chest, just find that outer border of your spinal muscles, and then you're just gently rolling backwards to look at the ceiling. And just find that perfect amount of pressure into your deep back. And you could just move into it and you could just add a little gentle controlled scrub. And you finished. So just gently come off your roller. So that was um, really just the whole spine, but we started in the neck. So the neck was the focus. If you wanted to start at the tailbone, then the pelvis would have been um, the, the focus. And maybe we'll do it that way next time. So hopefully, you're feeling better after you've done all of that.